the h of 3 equaled 4 because h was the green line. There was 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Well done. The value of x when g of x was 4. g of x was the red line. 1, 2, 3, 4. We go out, we go down, and it was negative 3. And the value of f of x, the value of x when f of x was negative 1, negative 1, we go out. Ew, barf, it's in the middle. What is your best guess? 1.5, right? Is there a way to double check that? Of course there is, because f of x is 2x minus 4, correct? f of x is negative 1. How do I make sure that my answer is correct? Pardon? I put it in the equation. Where does that negative 1 go? For x? f of x, right. Negative 1 equals 2x minus 4. Plus 4, 3 equals 2x, x equals 3 over 2, which is 1.5, and we're exactly right. Yaw? Yaw, yaw, yaw. Then I asked you to do 5 and 9. 5 and 9 had the answers. They're easy peasy because every single x intercept is what? x, 0. Every single y-intercept is what? 0. y. And what do you do with those values? You input them into the equations. That's all you do. So for the first one, x, I'm seeking an x. So what happens to the y? It's 0, so it drops out. Yes? So I have 8x equals 24, x equals 3. 3, 0. When I'm seeking a y, the x drops out. Negative 3, y equals 24, y equals negative 8. And there's my two dots. And because it's a straight line, because we know it's a straight line, because there are no exponents, I only need two dots. And I can connect them. Okay? Okay. So that's... 5 and 9 shouldn't have been any problem. Now, 13, there are four questions, so I want you to do them right now. Now, it says determine the slope of the line of each equation. What strategy did you use? Now, remember, we have numerous strategies for finding slope. One, put it on a graph and count. Is that the best way? What did we just prove when we put something on a graph? What can happen? You might not know if the points are in the middle, yeah? So that's kind of barfy, right? So graphing isn't the best way to do it. What's another way I could do it? I could find the x-intercept and the y-intercept, because those are exact points, yes? And then I would count. How would I find the slope? Rise, divided by run, right? That's the second way you could do it. A third way you could do it is with this equation, yes? Because if y is by itself, then whatever is with x is m. And what is m? The rate of change or the slope, right? So you have four questions there. You can just do them in your head. Just what would you use? Would you move the equation around to get y by itself? Or would you use intercepts and count? We'll wait a minute or so while people just think that through in their head. You don't 
have to actually do anything, you're just thinking. How's the teeth? Sorry? How's the teeth? You went to the orthodontist yesterday. Did you not get an adjustment? No. Yeah. Ah, I feel your pain. Well, I don't really. I never had braces. But I know people who have felt your pain. All right, what would you do with the first one? Move it around to get Y by itself or do the X intercepts? Jordy. You would get Y by itself because, of course, 10 and 4 don't divide well, do they? Right? So you could get Y by itself. What would you do with B? I would do rise over run because 33 divides by 3 and 1, doesn't it? So that one I would use intercepts. What would you do with C? Pardon me? I do rise over run again because 5 and 45 work well together, yeah? What would you do with D? You would do rise over run? I wouldn't do rise over run because 10 and 16 don't work very well together, yeah? I would use, I would isolate for Y there. But would they both work? Of course. But remember, if you try to do rise over run and you have fractions, remember your own limitations when dealing with fractions, right? Fractions make you all pee your pants still. Okay? All right. So, page 227 here, this page is all that. Do some of it, but not now. Okay? That's going to be part of your work over the weekend. Well, not over the weekend, but depending on what you get done here. Everybody good? No, it's not page 227 for you people. It's page uh, 140. Now, meanwhile, everybody else, please go to 141. Well, all of you go to 141. Remember, what are some things that slope equals? What are some of our options to write in this empty white space here? Rise over run. Excellent. What else? Change in DV over change in IV. What else? What else? There's one other thing dealing with graphing that we should put there. It's dealing with the algebra side of graphing, Jordy. Oh, you could do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but that's just change in y over change in x. M. That's the other thing for slope. Right? In algebra, slope is M. Those are all the things you have to be aware of. Because at any time, any one of those things may be what you need to work on the question. All right? You got to be good with all of them. So, we are going to put E there, F there, G there, and H there. I'm going to make E a blue line. Everybody, do not look at your neighbor. Do not look at me. Put your writing implement on any point in this quadrant. Any point. Just put it there. Just put it there. Any point. Do not look at the screen. Do not look at anyone else. Just put your uh, pen, pencil, crayon, stone tablet, whatever, on a point. Has everybody done so? Now, draw a line with a slope of two-fifths. Don't make that face because you know slope is rise over run. Two is in the numerator spot. So where do you have to go from the dot that you put on your piece of paper? Where do you have to go? To where? If you go two up, that is positive. Now, 
five, positive five is the Shh, be very, very quiet. We're hunting rabbits. No, wait, that's Elmer Fudd. I just stuttered. I need to do Porky Pig. Damn it. The number on the bottom is positive five. Where do you have to go? No, across means nothing. Five to the right. Now, I am going to draw my line on the piece of paper and on, well, it's obviously not paper, on the piece of vertical, virtual paper. Sorry for the interruption. At this time, if all grade 11 and 12 students with their teachers, please head down to the Abbey Arts Theater. That's all grade 11 and 12 students. Please head to the Abbey Arts Theater now. Thank you. All right. Now, I need somebody to please volunteer to me the coordinates of the first point where they put their pen down. Avnor. Well, the x-axis is this. Yeah. Yeah. But I told you to put it in the top left corner. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, negative. Negative six. Yeah, negative six and then positive five. So you put yours at negative six, positive five. And what are the coordinates of your second dot? It should be up to right five. So it should be. Negative one and positive seven, yes? Does everyone agree? Everyone agrees that Avnor sounds to be right on? Now, did any of the rest of you have those ex that exact point? Probably not, right? So there's the two lines. Everyone agree? Yes? All right. Now, what just happened when I moved Avnor's to mine? It's the exact same line, yes? Did it matter where you started? No. So does slope have anything to do with location? No. Slope is a way to get from one location to another, regardless of where you start or finish. Does everybody understand? That is why I didn't tell you where to start your line. Because no matter where you put your line, I could ask all 30 of you and I would get a 30 high stack of lines here, wouldn't I? Because it would all be exactly the same shape as mine. Everybody cool? Okay, so you go ahead and do the next ones. Where's F going to go? You go, put it anywhere you want. I'm going to put my dot right there. I'm going to go left one. That is how I did it. Now, what if I put my first dot here? And I specifically told you, you are not allowed to go out of this quarter. That means I can't rise upwards. So what must I do? Go down. One, two, three, four. There's my negative part. How do I get a positive part now to get a negative slope? Go to the right one. And there would be that line. And if I'd use the straight line tool and I drag that blue line over this pink line, what would happen? They would be exactly the same. Does everybody understand? Slope has nothing to do with location. It is not an X and a Y. It is nothing like that. It is simply directions. Everybody cool? Okay. What's a slope of zero? Nope. A dot can't have a slope. A line? What kind of line? Straight down? That would be a slope of zero? Straight across. And what would be the slope of 7? Seven? 7 and over 1. 
What do you notice as the numbers get bigger? What happens to the line? Longer? This was two fifths. This was four. This was seven. What happened to them? What happened to the slope? It increased, it increased, meaning it got closer to what? No. Zero is nothing. This was the first slope. This was the second slope. This was the third slope. What is happening? It is getting what, Nika? Steeper, right? Up to what is the maximum slope you could have? Infinite, straight up and down, because it is no longer a slope, is it? A lot of kids have a lot of problem with that, conceptually speaking, right? This one right here's fraction is 7 over 1. Agreed? Because I went up 7 and I went over 1, yes? Okay. What would happen if I went up the same seven but only went over to this blue, blue dot? What would that be? Seven over what? 0. 0.5, which would, of course, be a slope of 14. Agreed? Okay. What if I went up seven but only over a quarter? What's my slope now? 28. As the run gets smaller, the slope gets bigger. Yes? So what would 7 over 0 0.01 be? Slope of 70, yes? 7 over 0 0.001. 700. 7 over 0 0.00. Oh, sorry, that would have been 1,000. Um, 7,000. 0, 0, 0, 0.001. 70,000. What is happening? Bigger and bigger and bigger. So 7 over the tiniest, littlest number, 0. 0.00001, must be 7 with zeros after it. Right? That is what is happening here. That is why you cannot divide by 0. Everybody cool? That is why it's an undefined slope. So let us move on. This one, you're going to draw two lines on here. I am going to zoom in so it's easier. I would like, I will use two different colors because I have that ability. A pink dot and a green dot. Where do I put the pink dot? Somebody guide the magic pen. Don't all answer at once. It's really hard for me to ascertain who is speaking. That hurt, Mantoj. I feel bad for you because you whipped that hand up and you smacked that desk hard. You okay? Yeah. All right. Where do I go to put the pink dot? Again, don't all answer at once. We're going to let Mantoj handle this because she hurt herself. She's a casualty for this question. Down five. Down five? Save her, Selena. Left, one, two, three, four, five, and down, one, two, three. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to calmly ask, in the most calm, cool, and collected way I can be, all of you can read the coordinate grid, right? That was just an accident, yeah? Right? Everybody can. I don't, need to do a, I don't need to do that thing that your grade 9 teacher did where they get out some graph paper and let you play Battleship and think that that's going to teach you how to do the job rather than actually teaching you. I don't need to, do I? We all know that X's are left and right. Y's are up and down. X's go first. Negatives move left. Right? Okay. So negative 5, negative 3. Hit! You sank my Battleship. We're all good? Excellent. Where will the green dot go? Oh, I hear the lovely dulcet sounds of rain. Watch it, Selena and Mandoj. The roof leaks. Oh, no. <laughs> 
All right. Harry, guide the magic pen. Right two, up one. Right two, up one. Excellent. Now, if I mix green and pink together, I'm probably going to get brown. It is not racist. It just is the color. Somebody always yells racist when I say the color brown. Yes, always. I know it's appalling. It actually detracts from the problem that is racism, right? When I call Mr. Fujimura the giant Japanese man, somebody in the, build, in the classroom always yells racist. And I'm like, really? You probably shouldn't do that because there's about 500 million Japanese people in the world that would be pretty angry if you didn't say they were Japanese. But because we're so hypersensitive and don't actually know what racism is, we are make sure that we try and find it everywhere we can. How do I find that slope? On a graph. Rise over run. We just count, don't we? How far up did we go? One, two, three, four. Positive four. How far right did we go? Five, six, seven. So what is the slope? Four sevenths. Yeah? Yeah. Purple dot at zero, negative four. One, two, three, four. Orange dot at zero, three. One, two, three. What's the slope? Undefined. Yeah? Yeah. If it's on a graph and it goes point to point, what's the easiest way to find the slope? Count. Ah, ah, ah. Anyone? The count? Count von Countula? Yes, okay. Just making sure a lot of people don't know who the count is. I'm well aware of how lame that is. Uh-oh. Spaghetti-o. No graph. Kevin from Home Alone. But fortunately, Mr. Myers has reminded us that slope is that, isn't it? Two Y's and two X's. What do I find right here? Unbelievably, I find two Y's and two X's. Now listen to me, I'm going to be very, very cruel to you and I'm going to make you think. If you are on your right-hand side of the room, going right down the middle of this row. All right, so who would that be? Put your hands up. Hey, first try, Lego Batman. For you people, this, this is X1. For the people on the left side of the room, this is X1. Now you got to figure out the rest of it. M equals X. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Go. Using your appropriate side of the room. Bong, bong. No. That was 30 seconds. You only had to subtract two numbers. I know. <sighs> Never mind. I'm just going to lay back, have my coffee, maybe bring a novel because I could probably get a chapter or two in while you guys subtract. My friends think I'm lying. My friends think I lie when I say it takes my class of 30 an hour to subtract two numbers. It's not an hour. You're lying. If I've told you once, I've told you a million times. Don't hyperbolize. Get what I did there? I got it. 
Yeah, you did. <laughs> Lucky for you. All right. Is the left-hand side of the room that is red done yet? Yes. Of course. Well, your right side is red, my left. Of course, if this is X1, what's this? Y. Y1. How can it be an X when it's a Y value? What makes, what's this? X2, what's this? Y2. Now, Y2, 1, minus Y1, 7, over X2, negative 6, minus X1, 2, gets me negative 6 over negative 8, which is positive 3 fourths. Yes? Yes. Excellent. Now, if you went the other way, if this is x1, what is this? What is this? What is this? Y2, 7, minus y1, 1, over x2, 2, minus x1, negative 6. 7 minus 1 is 6. 2 minus minus 6 is 8. 6 eighths is 3 quarters. What does that tell you about which of the two you make x1 or x2? It doesn't matter. But you'd better know that on the left side of a comma, it's an x. He's not even looking. And on the right side of the comma, it's a y. Now, a couple of my good friends made exasperated noises while you people were saying X and X there. They are on the same wavelength as me. They are just meaner because all I did was sigh. Do it again. Half of you, that is Y1. The other half of you, that is Y1. Go, figure it out. Yes, I know. Forgetting how to do something 30 seconds after you learn it is a good way to go through life. You've all done two subtractions and possibly simplified a fraction. If this is Y1, Mantaj, what is this one? X1. Yeah, buddy! So what is this one? <laughs> what is this one? Well, Mantaj. Oh, I read you. Okay. But I did say if this is X1 or Y1, I want to know what that was. Right. Okay. So now I'm going to switch sides of the room to reverse it on them because that's the way to do this. Uh, Simmer, if this is Y1, what's this one? Oh, I couldn't fool you, Simmer. So what's this one? So what's this one? X1. And I am going to use purple because that mixes the two colors. And I'm just going to... Is this okay? Sorry. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Really? Why not? Avnor. I reversed the X1 and the X2, didn't I? Right? Some of you are going to do that. 
And some of you are going to hand in and say that's the answer. Right? Once you set your order, you have to keep your order. Doesn't matter which way you set it, but once you set it, you have to keep it. So if I was blue, it would be 4 minus fitting over negative 1 minus minus 5, which would be negative 11 over uh, 4, right? If I was the red side, it would be fitting minus 4 over negative 5 minus minus 1, which would be positive 11 over negative 4. Are they the same thing? Yes, yes they are. Because it is just the direction. If I started here in red, I would go up four, 11 and left 4. If I was there in blue, I would go down 11 and left 4, right 4. And notice it would make a straight line. I. How did you know? Yeah? Yeah, okay. Three. I want to find the slope of line A. What is wrong with going to the ends like you all want to do? They're not on proper points, are they? These points that are actually perfect are what we call cardinal points, I believe. I can't remember the proper word for it, but I'm pretty sure it's cardinal points. I don't know why they chose a cardinal. They could have said they're blue jay points. They could have said they were bohemian waxwing points. They could have said they were yellow-bellied sapsucker points. But no, they chose cardinals. Cardinals are a pretty bird. I understand that. But whatever. Are those points on cardinal points? No, no so I cannot use them, can I? But what do I know about a line? What makes it a line? The slope is what? The slope is rise over run. Where? Everywhere on the line. So if you can find any rise over run anywhere on the line, do you know the slope of the whole line? Yeah, sure, you betcha. So somebody stop the magic red dot when it would be a good time to stop it. I'm now going to hum the music from... Price is Right, where the guy climbs the mountain. Do you know that game? Yeah. Excellent. And there's even a red circle on that game. There? All right. It's a good thing you stopped me there because I started an octave too high and I couldn't have gone any higher than there. So uh, we would have been screwed on the next doo-doo. My voice would have been cry I would have been in doo-doo on the next doo-doo, if you know what I'm saying. I need to start with a lower uh, octave. So let us continue on until we get to the next yellow-bellied sapsucker point. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do
Ah, ah, ah. Everybody cool? All right. Now, what is, what is wrong with picking points that are really, really close together? Or I lie. That's the wrong way to ask that question. What is better about picking lines that are further apart? Or points that are further apart? Nobody could even begin to guess how to answer that question. More they are more accurate. Why? Uh huh. Seven over two. Yeah, I think I'm wrong, but... No, no, no. I see what you did. You went up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and over to there. Yes. Seven divided by two is not four. <laughs> it's three point five. At any rate, at any rate, let's say kid X drew the blue line and told me the slope was negative 4. Kid Y, oh, I shouldn't use X and Y because of the letters. Kid A, no, I can't use M. Kid Q drew the blue line and told me the slope was negative 4. Kid R drew, drew the red line and told me the slope was negative 3 halves or negative 7 over 2. Which kid gets full marks? Q, who was blue, because it rhymes, and I like two. R, who was red, because red starts with R, and I drove here in my car. And I had to listen to a Drake song this morning, so I am in mourning. Damn! See what I did there? Homonyms. Now, who's right? Who gets the full marks? Both get the full marks. Why? Because they both showed me they understood the concept of rise over run. And we are graphing, and graphing is not exact. Does everybody understand? All right. What's the slope of C? Should take one second. Undefined. What's the slope of D? Zero. Zero. Excellent. What's the slope of B? Find your points. I'm going to wait and let people choose. Oh, back to why it is better to choose points far apart. How long does this line go? For infinity, yes? So should we pick a small section of it or should we pick the biggest section we can? We should try to pick the biggest section we can. Okay, but the concept I'm teaching you is rise over run. Does the blue line still show me that you understand rise over run? So we're good. So what's the slope of B? First of all, is it positive or negative? Positive. Because I would go up and right or I would go down and left. Negative, negative or positive, positive. I will wait a moment while you decide on that slope. And then I would like to hear some people's answers. Remember, you can't get it wrong as long as you tell me a positive slope. I got me an 11 over 5. I got me a 1 half. I got me a 4 over 9. I got me a 3 over 7. All right, now let's have a look at our four choices there. Just like Sesame Street, three of these things are kind of the same, but one of these things just doesn't belong here. Now it's time to play our game. Do, 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 do. It's time to play our game. Who doesn't belong? Eleven fifths, because one half is pretty close to four-ninths because that's almost a half. Three-sevenths, almost a half. This guy's rolling two. So somebody's backwards. I won't say any people's names, but somebody's backwards because, of course, to go up 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Does 11 fifths get full marks? No. 
No. Does 11 fifths get any marks? No. Because that kid does not tell, show me he or she knows anything about rise over run. No. Well, then I would give the kid full marks. Because then the kid would show me that kid, the kid we are choosing at random, hypothetically speaking, would have shown me that that kid knows that 5 over 11 means a rise of 5 and a run of 11. Yeah. That kid just made a simple error in his notes, and that kid will never make that error again, will that kid? No, that kid's got it. It is locked in, right? in the vault. It's so far in the vault, they swallowed the key. Wait, you guys have lockers. That vault is so, that is so locked in the locker that you've already forgotten your combination. So every single one of you. All right, number four. You have five seconds to draw that triangle. Ready, set, go. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. You're telling me you can't draw a triangle in five seconds. Did you? Yeah. Let's see it. Incorrect. Incorrect. Harry. No, incorrect. No, incorrect. No, it's Selena's, it's blank. No. No, no, hey, Sarav, finally, positive, positive, positive. You can't have a straight up and down because that's not positive. You can't have a horizontal because that's not positive. And you cannot draw equilateral because positive, flat, negative. You had to make sure you went up and right on every line. But you couldn't have gone too far. You couldn't have gone not far enough. You had to be very careful. Jordy. Okay. Is that positive? Is that positive? Okay. Is that up positive? Is right positive? Yeah. Okay. Oops, that was supposed to be green. Son of a mother, let's go. Is that positive? Is that positive? So are all three lines positively sloped? Excellent. All goats have mothers. You can't be a goat. Without, there's no storks. Oh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. That's for planning class. I apologize. I completely forget I'm overstepping my bounds. Of course, all of you were delivered by stork, found in a cabbage patch. Um, what are the other lies they've told children for how babies are made? Radish pit. I haven't heard that one. Fell from the sky. Uh, gift. Oh, what? Left on the doorstep, gift from some supreme being. Um, I think I'm out of ideas. No, no, we're humans. There was sex involved. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mantage, Mantage. He'll be appearing here till February. All right. I remember how long I was able to keep my kids cool with that. Like, I was very scientific. About, well, you see, kid, there's an egg and a sperm. And I did all that. And then my daughter, one day, she's like, look, Dad, I know there's an egg. I know there's a sperm. You've explained that ad nauseum. She didn't say ad nauseum, but I know. That's not my question. How does the sperm get to the egg? And I was like, we'll have to talk with your mom. I should have, yeah, the fallopian tubes, damn it. I should have talked about urethras and fallopian tubes and all that stuff, and then I would have been okay for another couple of years. 
Shoot. All right, grandkids are coming, though. Grandkids are on the way. In 10 years, I'm going to remember that. Wait, 10 years? No. 10 years, 25, kid will be one. Kid will ask when they're about five. So in 15 years, I'll be 59. Yeah, I'm ready. Actually, I'll be a grandparent. I'm not even going to bother. I'm going to tell them straight out. Straight out. Then they're going to go to St. John and Beth and say, Grandpa said, and I'll be like, yeah, I did. I'm going to sit in my rocking chair and whittle some wood and kick kids off my lawn. I can't wait. And I'm going to develop a bad southern accent while I do it. Because it sounds more belligerent. Huh? Oh, I'll grow. No, no, no. Mutton chops, baby. Just mutton chops. Big old gray mutton chops like out to here. And then perfectly shaved in here. Grandpa's weird. Yes, he is. All right. Graph this using X and Y intercepts. If I'm using X and Y intercepts, what do I know? What do I know? X zero and no, zero Y. When I'm doing the X intercept, what happens to the Y value? It, ta- it may become zero. So do we care about it? So what should I write here instead of 3x minus 2y plus 8 equals zero? What should I write? 3x plus 8 equals 8. 3x plus 8 equals zero. Now what's my job? Same job I always have. Same job I've had since kindergarten when you were learning to count. Because your kindergarten teacher didn't tell you you were doing algebra when she gave you a drawing of three apples and said, how many apples is that? And left a blank box there. That's algebra. Except in algebra, we would have done one plus one plus one equals X. But when we leave it as a blank and have pictures, everybody's like, I know it's three, Mrs. Bad Grandma. But as soon as we take out the pictures and the box and make it letters and numbers, oh my God, I can't do algebra. I'm so dumb. I know that's fact. That's why I say it. I only speak fact. Thank you. Facts. What do I do here? Isolate X. So what has to happen to that eight? You got to move it over here. I'm going to say you're in the honors 10th grade. So I'm just going to be moving stuff around. I'm not going to be doing that. Mine is eight, mine is eight. Because I've had enough of it. Actually, the reason I'm not doing it is because even though I've been doing that my entire math career, my grade 11 still don't know how to do it. So I'm giving up. I'm just moving stuff around. Now what? Now what? So what is X equal? Negative eight thirds. Is that an easy number to put on this graph right now? No, why not? It's a fraction, yeah? So what, am, what is one option I have? If I make this one, what is this? Negative one. I need to get out to negative eight-thirds. Where is that? Two and... Two and two-thirds. So negative one, negative two, negative three. Am I at negative three? Not quite. I'm at negative two, thir- two and two thirds, which would be right there. Why is that barfy? It's in. It's not on a cardinal point, right? So what? It, my other option is I could do this. If that is one, what is one square worth? No, one third. I need negative eight thirds. So where would I go? 8 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, if you draw this graph and tell me that is 1, do I know you know fractions? Yes. Do you need to go 1 third, 2 thirds? My pen has died. Do you need to do that? No, of course not. All right, now let's do the Y. What happens? Same thing, so go. Okay. 
What happens to the X in the, this one? Drops out. Negative 2 Y equals negative 8 y equals what does y equal? 4 now there's a problem here because I have changed the scale on the x axis haven't I? Can I keep that scale on the y-axis? No, because I would need to go up 12, wouldn't I? Go off the graph, yes? So how do you show me that you're not changing the scale on the y-axis? You're going to leave it normal by putting a 1 right there. And then where do I put my red dot? Up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I make my line. Now, here is a problem, because this is the type of question that math teachers the world over like to do this to you for. They give you this scenario, right? And then they tell you to find the slope. And a great many of you, because you don't really pay attention, you will hear, you, all you have heard, slope on the graph, count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 4 over 8. Is that right? No. Why not? Because we changed the scale. The slope is really 4 over, how far did we go here? Negative 8 thirds, which is 4 times negative 3 eighths because I reciprocate the fraction and multiply to get negative 12 eighths which is negative 4 sorry negative 3 halves does everybody understand if you change the scale or if the scale is already changed can you just count? No. no. You must actually do the value of the rise divided by the value of the run. Okay? Now, some of you will say, Mr. Myers, you've never shown us that before. Actually, I have. When we first talked about slope, each of these was worth two, wasn't it? And each of these was worth two. Yeah? So we couldn't just, we, oh, that's a bad one because we didn't have different scales. Let's pretend we had different scales. Oh, uh, Carlinda and Alaric's balloon had different scales, didn't they? Right? Because it was up by tens and out by ones. <laughs> All right. My pen seems to have miraculously fixed itself. Maybe I just need to be more patient and do like half a question, coloring it in and have it come back to work. Okay, what's different in six? In six, you are going to do two things. You are going to do this question algebraically. Why was the mermaid embarrassed in math class? Her algebra was showing. Did I tell you the Van B's dad joke? I love telling dad jokes. Sometimes he even laughs. All right. I love telling dad jokes. Sometimes he even... No comma. No. No, it doesn't. I love telling dad jokes. I love teaching RJ math. 
You wouldn't write, I love teaching RJ, comma, math. Yeah, <laughs> You people tell me which one should we do first, algebraically or graphically? We want to go algebraic first? All right, let's do this thing. What do you see right there? That's an X. Is that the first X we see? So what would be a good designation to give it? X1. What's that? Y1. What's that? X2. X2. What's that? Y2, was that? Which is M, correct? M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. What's M? Two. Two. But how should we write it? Because slopes rise over run. Two over, one. Two over one equals Y2. What's Y2? Uh, uh, what's it? Y. Minus. What's Y1? Six. Six. What's X2? Minus. What's x1? Two. Two. Tidy that up. Two over one equals y minus six over Uh, negative six. I heard. How do you solve this? How do you solve this? Multiply what? There's a long way to do it. And then there's a shortcut. What's the shortcut to do any time in all of mathematics when you have anything equals a fraction? What's the shortcut? Cross multiply. What is 1 times y minus 6? This is not a trick question. y minus 6. What is 2 times negative 6? Now what's your job? Isolate. Do it. What does Y equal? Negative six. Yeah? Everyone agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us go to graphically. Which of those points do I know the entirety of its address? Point A. Where is it? Mm, six downwards. Really? No. To the right, two, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Does everyone agree? Excellent. What do I know about point B? I know it has an X value of negative four. One, two, three, four. So it must be somewhere on this line, correct? Because that is where x is negative 4, yes? What's the slope? Positive 2. I have to get over to this line. So can I go up and right, up and right? No, because that takes me away from the line. So what must I go? Down and left. Down 2, left 1. 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 Have I hit the line? And what is that y value? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5? Negative 6. Dun, dun, dun. To quote that stupid mouse in whatever movie that was. Is it a mouse that does it in that movie? The mouse comes out, dan, dan, dan. No, it's not the mouse. It's a baby. It's an animal. What is it? Oh, yeah, it's that stupid big-eyed, yeah. What movie is that? It's the Croods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Belt, isn't it? It's Belt that does it. All right. Let's see what we can do. What do you want to do first, graphically or algebraically? Oh, you want to go graphically first? You're, whew, that's badass. Okay. Where is the first dot that I know? Left one and one, two, three, four, five. What do I know of the other dot? 
So I have to be somewhere on this line, correct? Correct. And the slope is? So, does it make sense to go up and left? No, no of course not, because I have to get down to the line. So, I must have to go where? Down, right. down and right. Down how far? Down three, down three and? Right two. right two. Then what? Down three, down three right two. Then what? Down three, right two. Am I on the line? What is the value? Positive 5, because I already knew the negative 4 there, RJ. No problem. Now, let's, for the sake of argument, let's make this guy x2, just because. So what does that make this guy? And what does that make this guy? And what does that make this guy? Y1. And? M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. What is our M? Negative 3 over 2. What is Y2? Uh, y2 is 5. 5 minus, what is Y1? 4, negative 4. Negative 4 over, what is X2? Negative 1. Negative 1 minus X. X. Tidy that up. Negative 3 halves equals, what's 5 minus minus 4? Nine. Negative one minus x. Now what do I do every time in all of mathematics when you have something equals a fraction? Cross multiply. What is two times nine? Eighteen equals. I shouldn't be using red because I did the graphing in red. Eighteen equals. What is negative three times one? Negative one. Positive three. What is negative three times negative x? Positive 3x. What's your job? Isolate. 15 equals 3x. X equals? 5. And we knew x equals 5 because we did graphically first. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Ya, yeah. yeah, that was easy. Danke. Bitte. Your homework. That page I gave you, whatever it was, 140. No, that wasn't right, was it? You're going to do... You do need to do many questions from 140. Like, really, do you? They're all in slope-intercept form, right? What's the only important two points about slope-intercept form? If y is isolated, what's the slope? Whatever the coefficient of x is. If y is isolated, what's the constant? The number that's left over, that's not with x. What is that once you isolate y? It's your y-intercept, right? So if you can do that, you're good. So uh, on page 145, if I were doing, if I were you, I would make sure I did a couple of questions from 13... A question from 16, 17, and 28 as a bare minimum, if I were you. Aight? 15 minutes to work now? Go. I will add these last two to the to the end of the video so you can check them later. All right, what? Yes, yes. And of course, I will do these both graphically and algebraically.
Oh, I just put the X's in the numerator spot. What a doughhead. <laughs>